Hey, everybody. It's the real Nitty Gritty. Boots on the ground. It's the real Nitty Gritty. Boots on the ground. It's the real Nitty Gritty. Boots on the ground. It's the real Nitty Gritty. Boots on the ground. Hey, welcome everybody. Thank y'all for joining me today on my live stream. I really, really appreciate it. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, you know, the, the subject is how do you attract the opposite sex? Uh, now, I know, you know, it's really a simple question, guys. We're not going to talk about how you keep them, just how you attract them. Uh, we'll wait for a few more people to get on here. I see Jeff Tedler said, yeah, we're approaching 20,000. Uh, we are, man, and I tell you what, I'm, I'm so happy, man. I'm so shocked, really. We're going to reach that 20,000 about the same time as our one-year anniversary. Uh, I checked today, we're 83 subscribers short of 20,000, man. I'm going to tell you something. I'm nothing without y'all, and I don't care how big these YouTubers are on YouTube. Without the viewers and out, without the subscribers, we're nothing. Uh, July 26th will, will be officially my first year anniversary of Sunshine Shoulders. Um, I never dreamed that I would reach this point so fast and uh, have the influence that I've had so fast my and my uh, channel have the traction that it did. Uh, but we're approaching 20,000 subscribers, over 450 vlogs. I've made a vlog every single day except one day, and that was back in October 2020 when my granddaughter died. But ever since then, I've made a vlog every single day. Uh, on my live streams, man, there's anywhere from 250 to 350 people. I mean, we've helped thousands upon thousands of struggling filipinos during the pandemic man this is something man i'm really really proud of uh but i just never saw it happening so fast and if you're not familiar with my sunshine shoulders facebook page please go over there because that's where everything is happening it doesn't really happen on my youtube channel yeah y'all have seen me help rick and his family donna and her family and uh gail but that's it if you want to see the hundreds of smiling faces, the thank yous, man, the families, go to my Sunshine Shoulders Facebook page, man. And I owe it to, all to y'all guys. You know, it's what we did, not me. And I just want to make it clear, I spin the wheel over there. It's a game. It's not a charity. I spin a wheel. It's the people who we help are winners, okay? So, you know, I know a lot of people always say, hey, man, don't get in trouble over there. No, I'm not. We're not a charity, man. We never, we're not, we don't try to be a charity. Um, but man, it's just been, you know, a whirlwind, man, this last year. And I want to thank everybody watching. NTZ, thank you guys so much for what y'all do uh, to keep this a clean and respectable live stream. Uh, LeVon White, I see you. Ingram Davis, John Wells, Jacob Tanjay, Cal Deadman, JH, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Smoky Mountain Modeler, for your support. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Mark Ratner said, too bad for me I can't do Facebook because of my stalker ex-girlfriend. Well, see, I'm going to talk about I'm, I'm going to make um, – I don't know if she's Filipina or not, but I've got a video in the works. It's called How Do I Get – Is There a Cure for a Filipina Headache? You know, take two aspirins and call me in the morning. It's going to be funny, too, guys. Hey, Bobby G, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Mike Harris. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say, we got Rick here with us. Rick's sitting out front. He's waiting on my girlfriend. We're making Rick legit today. He had to go get his barangay uh, clearance, his police clearance, um, his uh, all to get his uh, license 
to drive a pedicab. He's going to be legit after the day. They're going over here. He needs a chest X-ray. Uh, but I'm happy about that, man. He's sitting right up there drinking coffee. I made him a cup of coffee and gave him uh, some Sky Flakes. So he's going to be legit. Um, one of my subscribers asked me, he says, hey, do you have to be married to the Filipino in order to get your child CRBA? He said that he heard a popular YouTube vlogger say that the child cannot be become a U.S. citizen unless you're married to the Filipino. It's not true, guys. That's false information. And I don't know who the popular YouTube vlogger is, but he's wrong. Both of my sons are U.S. citizens, and I was not married to either of the Filipinas at the time that they became U.S. citizens. So, no, you do not have to be married in order to uh, for your son or daughter to become a U.S. citizen. I think, you know, a lot of people want to use that as an excuse not to do it. Guys, the CRBA is really a simple process. It's something that uh, you should do as soon as you can. It's only going to cost you about $200, man. But imagine the life that you're going to give your child, the options. And on that matter, you know, I had a, a hater, of course, says I went too far in helping Gail. He said he thought it was a noble thing for me helping Gail, but he think I went too far. Uh, how could I go too far, sir, when we haven't made the connection yet? You know, but, hey, guys, you know, it's just part of, you know, being a, a vlog over here in, in the Philippines. But, yeah, guys, thank y'all so much. We're right at the door. We're knocking. We're kicking down the door. 20,000 subscribers. I have to say it's slow because I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> I love the challenge. says, hey, Calvin, I'm back on the hamster wheel in three minutes, man. But one of my subscribers, Robert Dame, and I don't think he messed me. Uh, saying his name. He's, he's in Arizona. He said, man, he said that hamster wheel and rat race is real over here. He said the price of a brand new Dodge, uh, did he say Ram? 68000 where he is. I was like, 68000 Have I been gone from America that long? When I left, uh, what's the big GMC it was like 38,000 or something like that, man. And that's a lot, you know. But yeah, man. Uh that helps the wheel and the man that rat race is something else. Hey, Ennis Montgomery, thanks for that super chat. He says, Hey, big brother Calvin, can you explain all the benefits of foreigner as has being married to a Filipina in the Philippines? Keep making us proud, Rockford, Illinois. Well, one, you can apply for that. 13A permanent visa, permanent resident visa. That's really the biggest advantage. And that way you never have to leave the country. The visa fees are, are lower. Uh, and you're a permanent resident visa here. That's the biggest one uh, that I would say. Uh, also, if you were to build a house with her, you would be in line to uh, if she died and y'all still married, you would be in line to inherit that inherit that land. You know, that that's something you need to talk to a lawyer about. But that, that's true. I've read about that. Um, that's two of the biggest things that I would say, uh, to be honest with you. Um, hey, uh, D. Gordon, what's going on, Buffalo Dan? Uh, okay, Buffalo Dan said it's not Dodge anymore. It's just Ram. See, I've been gone a long time, guys. But thanks again, Ennis Montgomery, for that. But, yeah, the CRBA, you don't have to. Rag Jam Rock says you're damn if you do and damn if you don't, Calvin, in the in the Gale situation. Yeah, I know. But I don't know how I went too far. I, don't, I haven't figured that out yet because we haven't made the connection. Okay. Kona Ranger says a 2021 Ford F-150 basic two-door would cost you 33000 Yeah. You're going to be on that hamster wheel a while paying for that. And I know my daughter bought a new car, and I think she got a seven-year finance plan. And I was shocked when I bought uh, my 
in 2009, I bought a 2009 uh, Toyota Solera convertible, and it was five years, and that's the most I had ever heard at that time. But now it's seven years, guys. Uh, Gabriel uh, Demude, uh, Demudy says, hi, Calvin. How do you meet girls now when you are currently living in the Philippines uh, during the pandemic? Well, see, I don't meet them. I, I, I've got a girlfriend, but if you were here, you would do it just like I said. You got to be clean. You got to be neat. You got to be respectable. And what has worked for me, and it, even today, man, I promise you, I was riding my bike this morning. You look at a Filipina, y'all ask me, you look away and look back. If she's looking, she's interested, man. That's what happened to me this morning riding the bike. Then, you know, it's up to you. You can go up to her and, you know, just use some uh, some conventional methods, man. Don't leave with your wallet all the time, guys. So let me hear about some of the ways y'all, you know, attract women. See, with me, I'm not a Rico Suave or anything like that. So women have always been attracted to my body, you know, to my muscles, you know, even when I was in high school. And that's how I attract them. Now, once I get them to me, then it's a whole different story. We don't want to talk about what you do to keep them. What attracts them to you guys? Is it your beautiful smile? Is it your, your, your nice looks, your job? What is it? Wow, Jeffrey Taylor said Japan had 10-year car loans. Wow. A Jerry Dev, Terry Dev said, go to the market, go to the mall. Yeah, but once you get there, you're still going to have to attract them. Yeah, you can meet them there, but how do you attract them, Terry? Stony Island Ranch says, man, I want to come uh, down there and, and visit. Uh, JJ says the diesel one is a lot more. Yeah. he. Uh, wow. Is it? It's ridiculous. Man. <laughs> yeah, Frank Allen, you're right. I'm out of commission. I'm, I'm on lockdown. Uh, and I'm kind of glad, man. I've thrown my picker away, man. You know, my picker, I let the women choose me now. And it's, it's worked out a whole lot better for me. Uh, okay, Cone Ranger said it's his smile. Okay. Jacob Tanjay says 84, 84 month financing. The hamster wheel will never stop spinning. Man, see, I'm glad I got off that, man. It's crazy. You know, then you put on that 30 year mortgage. Then you married to that old nagging wife over there. Man, you guys don't realize, man, it's a new life waiting for you out here somewhere in this 197 million square miles. You know. You couldn't pay me to go back there and, and get back on that hamster wheel, Jacob. Hey, Manny Crypto, I appreciate it, brother. He said, hope this covers a bag of rice for a Filipino family. It absolutely will. On Wednesday, we hold our electronic community pantry. I think the most bags of rice we gave out in one week was 40 bags of rice in one week. And that will uh, feed a family of four for 30 days. Rice is gold over here. Thank you, Manny. But, yeah, we definitely would do that. Uh, and if you have any questions, anything about that, go on my Sunshine Show's uh, Facebook page. That's where the transparency is. It's not really on here, you know. Yeah, I'm a one-woman man now, Frank. I promise you. What's up, Cal Debman? I see you. Good to see you, brother. To see you in the house. James B. said, what's up, Calvin? Almost 20,000, man. Yeah, and I owe it all to y'all, man. Without, I don't care how big these YouTubers get, man. Without you people watching and subscribing, we're nothing, man. We're just talking out there in, the, in space in the universe. And I don't care who it is, you know. I don't care if you're supposed to be a star, how much talent you got. Without the viewers and subscribers, we're nothing. That's why I never take it for granted. I make a vlog every day. Trying to get better and better and better because y'all deserve that, man. Um, Mr. Free said mac and cheese is gold here. I hear you, man. I miss good mac and cheese. Now, my woman's getting bad at making this stuff. Sam Champion sent me a box of stuff. Matter of fact, for breakfast, I had uh, some uh, mushroom, cream of mushroom soup. And he also sent me some cans of mushrooms. Drain that off and put it in there. Oh, man, it's delicious. Uh, 
<laughs> Sam Champion. I just mentioned you, brother. Thanks. I just ate some of that cream of mushroom soup, man. It's delicious. She's getting bad at reading the directions. He said, Calvin, just tell guys to imagine I sing that song somewhere over the rainbow. That's the new life in the Philippines. Yeah, for me, Sam, it could be Costa Rica for somebody. Panama, one of my subscribers, he said he's in going out the Philippines. They're taking too long to open up. He's going to Panama. He's sat, settled on Panama. Stony Allen Rand said, what's your Facebook? It's Sunshine Shoulders. Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Sam Safari. Yeah, I'm going to try it at the next time, Sam. He said you can place the comments on screen. You don't have to read as much. Just a thought. Yeah, I, I think I have to do that with that uh, stream yard. I can't do that with uh, uh, YouTube. Or maybe I can. Somebody help me out. Uh, Flink649 says, why does my Filipino of 21 years never want to live in the PI? Scared of other brown women. LOL. No, a lot of them, you know, life is hard here. A lot of them have a lot of bad memories. And, you know, for some Philippines, they just escape. To, to get away from here, they're not leaving. They're escaping. That's not all Philippines, but that's some of them. They don't want to come back, man, you know, for whatever reason, man, you know. But that could be one of them, you know, because if you haven't done all your the sowing of your oats and you try to settle down over here, it's going to be trouble, guys. I promise you, it's going to be trouble because you're going to have the rubber neck syndrome, the whiplash. You're going to have everything because every single day you're just going to be surrounded by beautiful women. And, you know, and in our minds, they all want us. See, that's an illusion, man. But, you know, that's just how it is. <laughs> Yeah, Buffalo Dan, it's true. You know, we're the prize, man, over here. Now, you know, and it's not trying to belittle anybody. It just, it just is. I didn't make the rules. Yeah, Clayton Merritt. I I can use, see, the, first, the very first live I ever did, I had John on as my guest. And that's before me and John even became friends. I had all kinds of problems with it, so I never went back to it. And I, you know, I don't want to do what everybody else does, man. You know, that's what separates me from everybody else. I don't want to get in line, man, like the sheep and do everything, but I'm going to try it, and if it's better, then I'll stick with it. Uh, but yeah, you know, I don't want to do what everybody else does. I think that's why I've been able to stick around so long. Kona Ranger says maybe she has no family in the Philippines. Well, I doubt that. Yeah, uh-uh. I'm sure they do. They get caught up in the matrix over there. Remember, you're talking about 84 month financing on a car, 30-year mortgage. You can't take off from there and come over here and visit anybody. My son's mother has not been back in five years. The last time she was in the Philippines, we were in the Philippines together. We went to the beach and everything like that, you know, took a lot of pictures and stuff. We went together, but, you know, and she hasn't been back since, April 2016. And that's a long time, man. You know, my son, him and his brother, they missed their mother terribly, man. And But, you know, their excuse is, you know, we're sacrificing for the family, but five years, come on, it's a long time, guys. Uh, hey, Jason Flint, you, you showing up for that Sunshine Shoulders get together in Vegas slash Jason Flint's birthday bash? Uh, his birthday's August the 16th. That was the day I got back in the, after my son was born in March, I stayed uh, to make sure he was okay because he was born premature. And I returned to the United States. I got back at 2 p.m. August the 16th. It was hot and everything. 
Uh, Daniel John said, Calvin, why are men so obsessed about finding a peanut girl? Is it the marriage visa foreigners are really looking for? If I go to the Philippines, I'd be more concerned about friends there first. Uh, that's something you'd have to ask them. But remember, it's part of the Philippine lore. The women, the women, that's the attraction for a lot of men. And, you know, the Filipina, you know, because of the way she treats men, she's one of, this is one of the last places on earth where women are women. They're not trying to be men. They're not trying to compete with you and all of that stuff. Uh, they're feminine. And, you know, men seem to like that. I'm a man. I like that. My American wife, we've been married for 18 years and, man, she just became, you know, too much like a man. I said, look, if I want a man, I would have married a man. I didn't want a man, guys. Uh, and, and Kona Ranger says the, the peni personality is wonderful. It is just the way their disposition, man. They have a sunny outlook on life, and you wonder where that comes from. You know. Ron Bizzle, what's up? He says, true. Yeah, um, Frank Ellis says, and we're trying to get unplugged Morpheus. You take the blue pill or the red pill. Your choice. Play. Yeah. See, I don't really understand that, but I think I took the red pill because I woke up, man. I was like, the hell with that hamster wheel. The hell with that 30-year mortgage. If I can come over here and build a a decent house with twenty thousand dollars, and then be done with it, and have somewhere to lay down, you know, and get a massage every night. I'd rather do that. Terry Dell said, "Just my opinion. They can be very insecure." Yeah, yeah, and you know that's that's part of it. You know, you got to take the good with the bad, Terry. You know, but I would I would take an insecure Filipino over a manly. American woman anytime, man, you know. Uh, I've, none of the women that I've met over here have smoked cigarettes. That's another thing. They want to smoke and do everything over there. Yeah, Mark, he said, Calvin, did you read the new press release, which came July 12th uh, from the Bureau of Directed YouTube bloggers like the Epstein Island Doomgate crew? Not really. What it's doing is saying you can't be an influencer. You you can't be selling products and endorsing products on your YouTube channel. They said you're violating the the uh, you know your your visa, the terms of your visa. And I don't see many people doing that over here. I don't see many people selling anything over here. I read that argument. It, it was talking about. It wasn't talking about what they talk about down there, the Dumaguete disciples. It was talking about you cannot be selling anything on your YouTube channels, becoming influencers, because they said, you know, they noticed that a lot of YouTubers are starting to, you know, sell and endorse products on their channels. You can't do that over in the Philippines. Hey, thanks, D. Gordon, for that super chat. He says, appreciate the insight and knowledge about the PI culture and women, found out my two favorite hobbies are in play there, selling and flying. Yeah, man. Uh, a lot of people on my channel right now, subscribers, man, they're pallets. And it's big over here. I've got a friend. I consider him a friend now. He's in Guam. Then I've got actually a homeboy from Louisville, Kentucky. He's half American, half Filipino. He's a pallet. Uh, and then selling is big, especially if you go to, uh, if you come here and go to Barakai and you can rent a sailboat, and we sailed all the way around the island, man. It was nice. It's 2010. It was like $65 or something. <laughs> Mr. Free said, do you miss those lovely tattoo women, Western women have? Well, they're starting to get them over here, man, believe it or not. Um, yeah, Rag Jam Rock said these modern women want to be men, want to be the man, especially if they make more money. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't like the confrontation and all that. See, I don't get that over here. 
Yeah, Mr. Freeze, they're all biker babes now. I didn't like it, man. Yeah, Frank Ellis, a lot of YouTubers are getting sponsored. And I think that's what they're they're talking about. You know, they're not talking about their content. It's more or less, as a matter of fact, they were encouraging it in their press release. They said because a lot of YouTubers are, you know, providing entertainment during this pandemic and lockdowns for a lot of people. But yeah, that's what they're talking about. Uh Smoky Mountain Model said Big John is finally here. Okay. I didn't see John yet. I still haven't rode in his car yet. My girlfriend said because he don't want to get pulled over by the police. She got jokes. <laughs> yeah. So how do you guys attract women, man? Now, I didn't say how you keep them. I said, how do you attract them? Come on, guys. Get the thumbs up. Y'all know that helps me. Yeah, Cal Devin. She got jokes, man. Roll to the Philippines. Is that Danny? She said, hey, Calvin, I attracted my Filipino by my quirky sense of humor. See, there's no way I would have attracted her with my ugly mug, even though she calls me Mr. Handsome. Yeah, because, you know, that's that Filipino makeover you got, Danny. Oh, you're so, you don't look as old as you are. And you're so handsome and you're not that big, really, you know. But yeah, see, that's what I'm saying, man. Your sense of humor attracted her to you. Um, but go to the Philippines, check out Danny's channel, man. He's hilarious and he doesn't even know he's hilarious the way that he does. Philip Rogers says, I always smile and say hello when I do. When I do, I look and Look him straight in the eye. Oh, look them. He says, look him straight in the eye. Make them feel important. It works one out of ten times. I know what you're saying. Uh, I look them straight in the eye and make them feel important. Works one out of ten times. Yeah. Uh, that's true. But here, my thing is, and try it when you get over here. Look at a Filipino. Once your eyes meet, look away. Look back. She looks again. She likes you. Teddy Bear said, I learned one thing. I was taught by an old guy in Angley City. He told me about the ladies in the Philippines. He said, you know, when you are snorkeling and you see a beautiful coral, if you move it, you lose. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> Mr. Free says, attract women in the U.S. Are there any women here? I tell you what, man. James Lyons says, I find good conversation is the key to a woman's heart. Yeah, but I'm saying, what do you do? Go down the street and just start talking to women, James? Because I'm talking about how do you attract them to you? Do they say, oh, there's the James Lyons. Look at him. He sure, you know, uh, is it your demeanor? Is it your appearance? He sure looks neat all the time, you know. Uh, he wears his hair, you know. I like his hair, uh, you know. <laughs> the sea goat says, I never have problems getting women over here in Florida. It, but it's hit or miss if they're attractive or not. See? But remember now, um, <laughs> beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. But I tell you what, but ugliness is to the bone. And one of my subscribers said, now beauty's in the eyes of of the beer holder. And I say, yeah, I guess it is. Buffalo Dan says, I try to speak some basic to Gala. They love it. It opens up a conversation. I noticed that. And I'm going to tell you, you'll shock somebody over here. Even if you just say, my own Boontag, they're shocked. Because they'll be getting ready to say good morning to me. And I say, my own Boontag. And I'll right, floor them. Uh, <laughs> it will. Roy Jones says, I look at her, then look away, then look, she's gone. <laughs> hey, Michael Onstad, that's our favorite uh, insurance guy, man. If y'all got any questions on health insurance, life insurance, anything like that, because I'm retired. Michael's the guy, 32 years in the business. Hit him up, man. He's got a Facebook page, too. Because a lot of questions 
you know, about what type of, where can I get a health insurance policy, that sort of thing. D. Gordon says a friendly approach with a warm smile. Say hello with a corny introduction, not too corny. What do you say? I know you're tired because you've been running around in my man all day. Is that something like that? Is that corny, D? Joe B says, hey, Calvin, when John's coming back to the show? John's welcome to come back anytime. Just ask him. Uh, Jason Flint says, I met my best girlfriend through someone we both knew, a mutual friend. And I ended up messing that up. But whatever. Then first wife was internet, second wife was Super Bowl weekend, next in the Philippines. Yeah, um, introduction is a good way. But I wonder what she was attracted to, Jason. That's what I'm trying to get at, guys. You know, when you go out to a nightclub, you just don't wear anything. Don't you put on your Sunday best and, and everything like that? I mean, you know, there's guys, there was a guy... He was older than me. He was a senior when I was a freshman in high school. His name was Derek Ray. And he, he wasn't the nicest looking guy, but he was the best dressed. And that's what women were attracted to. He got all the women, you know. But, yeah, I'm going to make a video about, uh, you know, is there a cure for a Filipina headache? You don't want to get a headache over here, guys, flashing money and attract the wrong woman over here. D. Gordon said, nothing good in the club to keep more in the night. Yeah, I met my first wife, you know, my American wife, the only American wife I've ever had in the club, man. After about six, uh, 40 ounces of Coke 45, she started looking pretty good. <laughs> Daniel John said wait for a woman's signal she looks at you locks eyes it means she wants you to to go there and talk to her wow okay that's sort of like what I said Daniel John oh, okay Jason Flint says so I guess it's my conversation and presentation okay uh, Frank Ellis said I don't usually have problems meeting women I'm 6 foot 2 193 and I'm Creole with curly hair, my conversation usually seals the deal. Okay. James Lyons says he smiles a lot, assuming that I'm clean and dressed nicely. All right. Yeah, a Jason Flint, six, Coke 45, you know, Coke 45 is cheap, and it gets you there real quick. That was my go-to drink. Uh, either what was the other one Coke 45 and then the what was the 80 something 80 I can't remember but man yeah she started looking good and yeah the old English 800 Joe B that's what I'm talking about see that was the the cheap stuff man I had you know cause that, at the end of my drinking man I couldn't afford the good stuff I couldn't afford the Miller High Life and, you know, and all that. Uh, hey, how you doing, my garbage men? We gave them a bag of rice. You guys work hard. Yeah, St. Ads. Yeah, see, toward the end, I couldn't afford none of that good stuff. I was drinking Buckhorn beer. And I couldn't afford cores or anything like that. Yeah, Old E. I was drinking hell, um, but that, uh, what's that other wine in that little bottle that they call liquid crack? Flink 649 says, I think it boils down to this. He said, Philippines are still connected to being feminine or knowing how to be a woman. And they like being female. Beats Western women every time. That's what I've come to find out. Kona Ranger, Mickey's Big Mouth, see, I couldn't afford that. 
pours and all that good stuff. Mm -mm. I was drinking uh, Fall City and Sterling and anything really I could get my hands on, to be honest. Yeah, Cisco, James Lang. Yeah. Now, Joe B., I started out on uh, Wild Average Rose and ended up on Wild Average Rose, believe it or not. Night Train. Uh, American Inn Express says, Hi, Calvin, how far? Is your new house from the highway or main road? Oh, okay, it's a, it's far, but you can see it. But I would say it's probably about a, I'm gonna say a block. If you see me walking down one of my videos, yes, far. Now downtown, you know, San Carlos is small. The 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 uh, the inner city is small, so. I can get to downtown for my new house and or this one in a tricycle probably in about three minutes, I would say. It's real close. And I want to thank Smoky Mountain Modeler and American Inn Express. Somebody sent me, and I asked you guys to stop sending me this stuff, where some uh, female troll made a video on, on me. Well, I clicked on it, you know, because y'all sent it to me. and But I didn't listen to it. But the first two comments I saw was from Smoky Mountain Modeler and American Inn Express. They were taken up for me, man. And see, that's what I like. You know, don't send me that stuff. But if you see somebody out there bashing me, man, take up for me, man. And I want to give you guys a shout out because that meant a lot to me, man. I mean it, man. Uh, Smoky Mountain Modeler and American Inn Express. You know, see, that's what it takes, guys. You know, I can't I can't fight these invisible people. I mean, you know, and I have nothing to prove. Anyway, uh, D. Gordon says you can take the biggie approach. Ask, ask you what your interests are, who you be with. <laughs> yeah, Joe B. said you're taking me back to my youth in the 80s. Man. And see... In Louisville, Kentucky, you had to be 21 when I was in high school to buy alcohol. And we used to pay somebody going to and get it. Well, when I joined the Navy, I was still 18. But my first duty station was in Tennessee, Millington, Tennessee. Well, at that time in Tennessee, you only had to be 18. So I tried to pay a guy to go in and to get me something. He said, man, you go in there and get it your damn self. All you got to do is... Uh, you uh, be 18, man. I was shocked, man. I was off and running then. Yeah, thanks, Smoky Mountain Molly. He said, I won't ever send you a link. You have better things to do, man. I mean, really, man, it, it meant a lot to me. The first two comments I saw was from you and American Express. Y'all took up from me, man. And it means a lot, man. Hey, James B. said, what's the latest on Rick and his girlfriend? Rick's sitting out here now. He's waiting on my girlfriend. He's going to get his chest x-ray. Rick's going to be legit today. Now, yesterday we took him to get his barangay clearance, his police clearance, something from City Hall. I got a, a picture of all the everything he needs. The only thing he needs now is that check x-ray, and he'll get his pedicab license. See? Yeah, Clayton Mary props at Smoky Mountain Mile and American Inn Express. Uh, Sam Champion says, Calvin, since there are cattle, free roaming and grazing at your new uh, lot area. Who would be responsible for cleaning up those cow biscuits? Oh, they're not going to clean them up. Now, uh, believe it or not, they were actually eating on my lot until the guys start building the house. Yeah, they were eating on my lot. You know, I don't know if it's the owner. See that all that land back there is privately owned. So I don't know if those um, cow belong to them or not. But what I'll do is I, you know, I'll give somebody a job and I have them uh, clean all that up around me. I, I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, James B. Yeah, he's getting legit now. And see, we match Rick. Every day he goes out and works. Whatever he brings back, we give him something. With a minimum of 150, you know, 
like yesterday, we gave him uh, 150, you know, but we're paying for all the paperwork and all that. Of course, he doesn't have it. <laughs> Buffalo Dan says, it's Filipina likes those Jesus sandals. You wear them with socks. See, I don't wear mine with socks. Uh, Daniel John says, Calvin, Thailand, Phuket, opened up for vaccinated tourists. Why can't the Philippines do something similar? I'm in China waiting for the Philippines to open. Well, here's the thing about Phuket, too. They're, they're strict now. When you get there, you have to stay in an approved hotel for 14 days. Okay, and you can't leave Phuket on days 1, 6, and 12. You got to have three straight negative uh, PT, I mean, R RT, PCR swab test. Then you can roam around. Uh, how you doing? Then you can roam around to uh, the rest of uh, Thailand, but it's not just open, wide open. Uh, and, you know, it, it's their mindset, Daniel John, really. See, Philippines and Filipinos they're very conservative, man, you know. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why they're very conservative. I mean, not just with COVID, with everything. You'll see when you get over here. I mean, they're slow, methodical, man. <laughs> hey, Bebe Sakara, she's one of my Filipino subscribers. Good morning. Kona Ranger said Calvin's going to start up a power plant with the cow patties. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's pretty bad there. Um, I've got a, you know, zigzag, man, you know. That's why I always tell the taxi, I mean, the tricycle driver to let me off right in front because I don't like walking through there, man. It's a mess. And, and, and you know, and that's pun intended. It's a mess walking through there. Alexander never mind said, can you raise pigs for sale? Probably not there, but you probably can in the outskirts and um, in the province. But that's a hard business, man. You know, you're going to work, you know. A BB says, uh, the nice shape when you built the house now, sir, I saw in the video. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's coming together. Uh, BB. Yeah, Terry Dell said vaccinated still quarantine doesn't make sense to me. And it's not really they're disguising that quarantine, Terry, because it sounds like quarantine to me. You got to stay in approved in an approved hotel there for 14 days. You know, you can but you can't leave Phuket Island. You know, and on days 1, 6, and 12, you have to test negative. And if you do, then you can roam around other parts. And this is fully vaccinated. Yeah, Frank, uh, Thailand is, is missing all that tourist money. Yeah, they're taking some chances. And they're opening up in phases. The next phase is those is, is some more islands that that one island that's Real popular, but it's also known for a lot of foreigners dying there, and they never being uh, investigated. Daryl Daryl says, "Sunshine, my man, what's going on?" Uh, Joseph Marquez says, "I also have a bald head. I just had a bald head when I met her because." I told you I had that Filipino haircut. The guy takes my line way back here. It was rounded off like that, too. I mean, really, I was looking bad. And I just decided to cut it all off, man. Nobody in my family is bald but me. Sam Safari says, Mr. Calvin, you gave Rick a new life. God is helping you with a new house and will give you more. Absolutely, man. I believe that. And Rick has really surprised me. He's really come to life, guys. He's not the same anymore. He wants to do that. He came to us. He said, look, I need a pedicab license. I don't want to get pulled over and get in trouble. So we said, okay, Rick. 
Okay, BB, thank you. Joe B says, are there a lot of foreigners living in San Carlos? Yeah, there's quite a few, according to John. I, I see a few of them. I, I've got a next-door neighbor. I think he's from Australia. Uh, but you don't hardly see them. Now, I see them on Wednesday. They've got a little drinking hole that they they all meet at over by Center Mall, and I ride past them on my bike. See, I don't drink. Uh, Frank L. said, damn, Cal, I can't even picture you with her now. Yeah, I used to have a... I used to have a nice fade, man, and, you know, the hairline was good. I had a good barber in the in Cebu, but what happened was he took an overseas job in New Zealand. I can't help him. I can't blame him. He was a newlywed. They just had a baby, and I think she was pregnant with another baby. He got an offer for a job in New Zealand. He's a Filipino, and, yeah, he uh, – I couldn't – I mean, he was as good as any barber I had in America – and then, you know, when you go to them Bruno's, that's where he worked, you get a legitimate head, neck, and back massage with your haircut. Costs about $250, but you, it's worth it. Destination Cebu, he said, married to a Filipino, been there three times, retirement in a few years. I hope all these guys are asking questions. Know you are spot on with your advice, even if it's not what they want to hear. Great blog. Thank you, uh, Destination. I appreciate it. And remember, guys, I'm giving y'all my boots on the ground experiences. You know, this is my perspective. You may see something else when you get over here. No one was doing it. That's why I started my vlog. So that the new man and woman could get an idea of what it's really like over here. Yeah, there's Barakai and Pang Lao and all that Palawan and all that beautiful women in bikinis and stuff. But it's also just another... Philippines, it, it really doesn't need me to hype it up. It's it's good enough on its own. Yeah. John says, I go to the drinking hole once in a while. Yeah, I mean, they there. You know, that's what I call the drinking hole. You know where it is, John. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Cal. Okay, damn man, you got jokes today. He said, I went from looking like Warren Moon to the Ninja Turtle. And I mean that as a compliment. Okay. <laughs> Boy, Joe said, let's donate, get Cal Jerry Carroll wig. My my girlfriend, she's she's used to me now. I mean, when I first did it, I was, she was shocked because she was at work, you know, going around collecting taxes, going to the Bureau of uh, Internal Revenue and all that. And you know, when I made the decision to cut my hair, it was one of the most courageous decisions I've made in a long time, man, believe it or not. And boy, was she shocked. She likes it now, though. Uh, Joseph Marquez says, they're a market for precious metals like gold and silver in the Philippines. Absolutely. The Philippines has a lot of gold uh, and silver mining that's going on here. Uh, Joe B says, my fiance from Mindanao can't live there. And she doesn't uh, not much else about the islands no much else about the islands so i'm trying to find a good area to move to oh she doesn't like uh mindanao i like mindanao um but yeah sabu is a good place um i love sabu uh, i love dumaguete and any of them little cities outside dumaguete uh you know dowin Zam zambongita uh, Chatham, uh, but Batten, I think that's the name, is it? Batten. Uh, it's a lot of nice little city. And then remember, guys, if you really want to slow it all the way down, move over there to Sikiho Island. Thank me later. What's going on, Derek? <laughs> Frank Ellis, you're right, man. And I, See, I was kind of worried because I've got like a block head. And I was wondering if it was going to work for me, but I didn't have no choice. And see, the good thing, that's what I like about the Philippines. Nobody even cared over here, really. Nobody even gave it a second thought, man. They never even looked at me twice with a bald head, man. And I could let all this grow on the side and be bald at the top. They wouldn't care, man. That's why I love it over here, man. They got better things to do. 
than, you know, worry about my clothes and all that. Yeah. But they're going to look at your shoes. They're going to look at that. Oh, yeah, uh, Teddy Bear. Depola is a good place in Mindanao. The Peton, which is not far from Depola. Man, all that northern Mindanao. But I like southern Mindanao, even though people are afraid to go there. I like Zamboanga. I like the Val, General Santos. Uh, I like um, uh, Serengani Province. I like all of that down there, even though they tell you don't go. Uh, oh, wow, the USA basketball team lost again. Well, you know, a lot of them guys are tired, man. I wouldn't bet against them. Remember, these are exhibitions, man. When they get ready to play for that gold, they're going to kick them people's butts. They're tired. They just got finished playing. A, what? How many games did they play? A whole season? Those guys are tired, man. You know, no one's going to beat them. Trust me, man. Uh, yeah, Teddy Bray says, yeah, see, you can catch the cat to do Maggette. Yeah, what I do is I catch it. See, when I was in Zamboanga, I'd ride the bus, Teddy Bear. I'd ride the bus from Zamboanga to Depola. Then I'd take a, a Hubble Hubble, which is a motorcycle, guys, you know, as transportation. I'd take it to the beach and to the pier, and I'd ride the fast cat. Take me about three and a half hours over to Dumagaddy. Then I'd take the series another four um, hours away. To San Carlos City. Edgar Castillo says you're probably very exotic to them, Calvin. Yeah, I am. You know, even though they see, you know, they love basketball over here, they love Michael Jackson and all that. A lot of Filipinos, even in 2021, have never met a black American in person. You know, uh or a foreigner in person, for that matter, to believe it or not. Kona Ranger said the Vow City is great. Yeah. I've got two subscribers, Texas Tizoy and T.J. Johnson, they're both down there now. Uh, Roy Jones said no dream team in this Olympics. Well, see, I, I think now they don't have the mindset of the dream team, Roy. The dream team had a lot of pride. They wasn't going to let – they don't care if it was a, a, a exhibition or not. They were going to kick your butt. Hey, Zen and Awesome, he says, hey, Cal, killing it on the live stream like always. Riddle me this. Aside from like Manila, Cebu, and Angley City, where's a decent nightlife scene? Or are those the most common? Well, Dumaguete has a decent nightlife scene, believe it or not. I mean, really decent. Dumaguete, uh, like the guy said, Davao City, uh, what I consider to be the expat alley, Bacolod City, Elo Elo City. Yes, a lot of places um, that you can. And then, of course, if you go to any of these resorts like Peng Lao, Bahal, you go to Alona Beach, you go to Barakai, they're partying, man. I'm talking about pre-pandemic, believe it or not. Uh, wow, Mark Ratner said, Cal, the first pick of the MLB draft was a kid out of the University of Louisville. That was yesterday. Yeah, see, I – the baseball team there, I was getting ready to say our baseball team. I don't play for them. I stopped saying that. But the University of Louisville back baseball team is really good, man. They, they've got that, they got a great coach and they put out some great talent, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good to hear that. Yeah, Kona Ranger, no pride anymore. Some USA kids are lost. They spoiled. Yeah, they're getting all that money, man. I mean, a lot. Uh, Marlo North said, hey, Cal, what about the Polar City? I like the Polar. Uh, it, I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful women all in the Philippines. But I'm going to tell you, man, the Polar, man, they got some beautiful women, man. Down there in Mindanao, see, um, especially the the more south you go, they they become more uh, Spanish. Like, go to Zambanga. It'll shock you. See, remember I told you my wife, she was, when I met her, she was 36, 26, 36. I promise you that. And only weighed maybe 110 pounds. See, that's what attracted me to her. I couldn't believe it. I was like, you sure you Filipino? And even when I took her to the States, everybody thought she was from Mexico or from Spain. They didn't know she was Filipino. Uh, Zen and Awesome says, you think it will return before I get there in a few years? 
Yeah, absolutely, man. Filipinos love to party, not just the foreigners that come over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Teddy Burr says, I tried to travel to Zamboanga, but they blew up the bus in Ippo. Yeah. Um, scared me, so I took the bus back to the Polo and up to, and, and the cat to do Maggette. Yeah. Uh, but see, when was that? Hey, thanks, LeVon White. He said, enjoying the chat. Can't wait to meet you, man. I can't wait to meet you, too. Um, when it, are they taking off now? Are, are they uh, working out now, Kobe, your son? LeVon White's got a son, guys. He's legit, too. He plays for Boston College. Uh, wide receiver. Reminds me of Steve Smith. That's how he plays. Yeah, Marlon North, he said, thanks, sir. Great to know. Yeah, the polo, you're right around the Peaton, and then there's a, a really nice resort right in there. It's called Dukak, Dukak Beach Resort. It's really nice, man. One of the nicest in northern Mindanao. Philip Rogers says, up by the old military bases, Hit Walking Street, best nightlife in the Philippines. Suit up before you head in. Oh, okay. I hear you, man. Retired 2019. He said, Calvin, how much is dinner for two at a nice restaurant? Well, see, we always eat at, um, at Mawani. It's only about 20 bucks, man. That's the best food probably in the Philippines that I've tasted, especially in a little small town like this. 20 bucks, hell, you could take four people out. I, me, John, his wife, and my girlfriend, we, we've eaten, I think, for, for about 1,000 pesos before 2019. It's not expensive here, man, believe it or not. Yeah, Frank Ellis, Brick House. It's, it's Brick House is over here now. I was with my girlfriend. We went to get some vitamins the other day, and it was a Brick House that walked in. She was a young girl. She couldn't have been no more than about 20 or 21 and she had some some short shorts i mean she was beautiful she's a brick house she was by herself um and you see that over here now i mean because they do a lot of walking man so i'm gonna tell you their legs are, are just so beautiful my girlfriend has just the most beautiful legs i've ever seen alexander never man says please do more food and property uh, videos <clears throat> I could man but you know they're just so they're just so boring really um you know you sit there and uh it's just so much of that already on YouTube about the Philippines you know I was trying to do something that was I was trying to fill a gap fill a void that wasn't there I mean and then a lot of these places, they don't want you coming in filming. You got to ask them, you know, and, you know, they don't want you filming them. And then, you know, you got to realize you can't just put people on these videos, you know, without their permission. The customers, the workers and all that. It's just a headache, man. You know, uh, but whenever I go to a resort, I walk around the resort. So I do more of that. But as far as food and it's just a headache, man. They won't let you do it. They're so um, bashful and, you know, John said Marwani is outstanding. It is. It, it will shock you. Retired 2019 said, Calvin, how often do you work at it? I work at it every day. I take two days off every week to let my muscles relax, you know, rest because I'm 58, guys, you know, but I ride my bike every single day. I do my routine five days a week, and then I do that stud maker once or twice a week. But every day I'm doing something. You know, I don't want to let the dust gather on me, retired 2019. Remember, my woman's 19 years younger than me. I've got to stay in shape. And she doesn't, uh, she can't keep up with me right now. <laughs> Derek uh, said, I took 32 people out for 100 bucks in Hermosa. Baton. Yeah. What year was that? <laughs> Roy Jones said you had a brick house. Now you're building one. 
Well, when she got over to America, she put on 60 pounds. I could hardly recognize her. And I asked her, I said, you know, is something wrong? You know, because a lot of times when you, uh, when something's going on, when you're worrying, you're depressed, you're anxious, you eat. But she said it wasn't. Oh, okay, Teddy Burbs in 2010 when they blew up the bus. Yeah, see, it's gotten a lot better now. Especially since Duterte put that, um, you know, there was martial law in Mindanao. Even when I got back here in 2018, it was still in place, believe it or not. Well, James B., it's not so much that they're muscular, but they're shapely. You know, you could see where, you know, they walk a lot and it does them some good. <laughs> Jerome Morgan says you're too real for you too. Thanks, brother. I hope that's a compliment. Hey, Ron Bizzle says we look forward for boots on the ground chat. Very balanced, man. Thank you. Uh, Mark Ratner says skinny women do nothing for me. Brick house or bus. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of them now here. And I don't know. I guess because there's so much of a mix here. You got African, you got Polynesian, you got Asian, you got European, you know, of course, Spanish, and you throw that all together, man, you're going to see some sights here. It's going to shock you because it shocked me. I get shocked every day. I live in a little town like San Carlos City, and, man, I tell you, man, my God. The guy asked me earlier in the live stream, he said, why are people so, you know, why are men so – interest in meeting p women man you know obviously you've never been here before not only did they look good but it's their personality their temperament their disposition you know they just you know you you know once you deal with a filipino man you're not gonna go back i promise you that oh okay 2019 all you can eat buffet yeah that's a lot of people, but she she put one on you, Derek, for you to take the whole family out like that. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, guys, let's get the thumbs up. Teddy Bear said it's good to know that Ipple has become safer. Well, I'm not saying about Ipple. I don't know about Ipple because whenever I go through there, when, if I'm going from like uh, Duma, I mean Zamboanga to Dupola, and we get to do Ipple, I don't even get out of the bus. And if I do, I don't say anything. It, you know, that's where a, a foreigner, he was kidnapped. Him and his wife, they went in their compound and kidnapped him and his wife. I think they paid a ransom and got out. This was not too long ago. Uh, but I usually just ride through Ipple, man. I don't deal with that. Yeah, Philip Rogers said my ex when she got to the U.S. put on forty five pounds in six months at five foot one. Yeah, they do that. Uh, Joe, uh, you know, because remember, it's our dad over there too, guys. A small drink of ours is like forty four ounces. Is a small over here. You really get a small over here. It's like going to a Mickey Mouse birthday party when you get your meal over here. Uh, Joe B said, Calvin, how did you retire at fifty eight? I actually retired at 55. I'm an insurance agent, and I get renewal income. The time I came over here, it was about 18 or 1900. It's down to about 1400 now. That was enough for me to jump off the 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 hamster wheel because see, I've been over here on and off for 12 years. I knew I could live off of that over here. See, and that's what I did. I said, you know. You only live once, man. I don't know what behind that veil of death, man. I'm, I took the chance. I'm glad I did. And that's how I was able to do it, man. And now, you know, with my YouTube channel, with you guys giving me, making my YouTube channel grow so fast, man. You know, I'm earning money on my YouTube channel. That, that helps me too, you know. Um, but you can't look forward to that, man. This is like something I never dreamed happening, man. 20,000 subscribers within 
you know, this might be a year for me. I think when I first put my first real video out, it may be next month. I got to go back, but about a year, in less than a year, 400. Now, I work my butt off, too. I, I make a video every day. Every single day I made a video, except for one day back in October when my four-month-old granddaughter died. I took a day off. Uh, you know, 450 videos, man, that's a lot, man. You know, like I said, today, for some reason, I guess they watching a basketball game. That's, I usually get 250 to 350 People on my live streams, man, we've helped countless thousands of struggling Filipinas and Filipinos during this pandemic, man. If you'd have told me I would, all this would be happening within less than a year, hey, man, there's no way, okay? Am I happy? Yeah, I'm proud, man. But, man, you'd have never convinced me this would have happened so quick. So, you know, but I tell guys who want to start a YouTube channel, man, you got to make uh, a video every day. Practice for the next one. Talk about something that you uh, you can put your heart and soul into that you know about. You don't need a script, man. I'm a script, man. I don't edit, man. I'm just raw, man. And, you know, I just give you the nitty gritty how I'm seeing things. You know, that's all. No, Roy, I'm not pimping off YouTube, man. YouTube makes more off my channel than I do, but, but you know, I don't, um, I don't apologize because I work hard, man, you know, uh, and, and Alex never, man, said, Calvin, we're going to support you. See, I appreciate people like that, you know, but no, I don't apologize, but yeah, uh, no, I'm not pimping, but because I just now got my first check from YouTube in January. Hell, what was I doing for the two? And a half years before that, it was my 1400 1600 a month strong. That's how I was able. I took the chance, man. I followed my gut. And I've always followed my gut. And, and it's always been the right thing to do, man. You know, because I, I'm like, I agree with Shakespeare. Here's what he said. He said, what little we know of death, life should be a paradise, man. And that's where I'm at, man. I don't know. We don't know nothing about death. But we know about life, man. I'm not going to be around here pussyfooting around. I'm going to live the way I want to live. You know, what What? What the guy say? Damn the, poor, the, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. That's where I am in my life, man. You know. James B. said invest in some dividend stocks. That's good passive income. You know. See, I took everything I've earned off YouTube. I'm building that house. Every single penny. I didn't want to buy a car. I didn't want to buy a fancy motorcycle. You know. Cal Devin says, thanks for the help. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, John Well said, the only one making money from YouTube is YouTube. Man, you couldn't have said it. And, you know, but I don't bash YouTube for that because of all the social media. YouTube is the only one that really pays the little guy for real. You know, I mean, you don't have to do some spectacular stuff like you do on Facebook to get paid. I mean, as many people as I've helped on Facebook, man. See, that's what I'm, I, you know, I don't have anything to prove. I'm not doing it for the money, guys. I was helping people when I had 359 subscribers. Those were my daughter's subscribers. Go on my YouTube page, you'll see it. I was sacrificing a thousand pesos every friday out of my pocket there was nobody supporting me nobody even knew i was even around that i even existed that's how it all started you know and no matter what and if you read in my mission statement it's a mission sort of statement i said as my youtube channel grows as my facebook channel grows i might help more people and i've done that See, I mean, you know, no matter what anybody thinks, man, the people over here, they love me, man. They love, they can appreciate what I'm trying to do. I created a game so no one would ever think that I'm a charity because I'm not. You have to win. The spin wheel has to stop on your name, okay, for you to win, see. But I do it, I do it twice a week now. On Wednesday, I give away food and rice. 
And on Friday, I give away that thousand, man. We've helped thousands, man. I tell you what, I'm proud of that. Philippines, my paradise. There's Ned, guys. Check him out. I promise you. I'm the nitty gritty. He's a scholar. Ned doesn't make a video all the time, but his video uh, in depth and, you know, the pack full of knowledge about this place. Don't get on a plane and come to the Philippines like I did, guys. That's all I did. I didn't know nothing about the Philippines. I could have landed in Abu Sayyaf territory. That's how stupid I was. Don't do that. Now's the time to do it. Derek says, Calvin, you don't have to justify what you're doing. I'm not. But it's all about being transparent, Derek. You know, I owe that to my subscribers and to my viewers. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, at Leo XL, you know, they, they see that instead of asking you for help, they say, hey, Calvin, can you help me? How did you do this? How you do that? They just go on the attack, man, and I don't worry about it. Uh, Edgar Castillo said, I'm proud of you, Cal, but can you get a fancy motorcycle and put it on YouTube for ratings? Yeah. I mean, you know, my girlfriend's got about as fancy motorcycles as we're going to get. She's got most people around here, they ride a 125. She's got a 150. Now, we didn't have the big bucks to buy that 155 like her sister's got, you know. But hell, she's got a sponsor, too. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Zen and Awesome, thank you. He said, I was watching some of your first videos today. From day one, you've been out there for people. That's why I created my channel for the new man and woman who's never been here before to try to ease the worries you have about the Philippines. Is it safe here? Yeah. What are, what are you really going to expect when you get here? Do the people, are they really that nice? Yeah, they are. Retired 2019 said, Calvin, how, how long did it take you to lose 30 pounds? Be honest with you, I'm gonna tell you, it took not that long, probably about four or five months. Man, it started falling off. I jump started my metabolism when I stopped uh, eating sugar and coffee for, for about 60 days. I mean, and then I was doing a little bit of the uh, as long as I could, I was doing it inter intermittent fasting. I was trying to not eat for as long as I could. Sometimes I'd go to 10, sometimes I'd go to 11. And then every night I'd drink that concoction of grapefruit juice. I haven't been able to do it here because I can't find grapefruit juice here. Grapefruit juice, eight ounces of grapefruit juice, two tablespoons of, excuse me, apple cider vinegar, and one tablespoon of honey. That's the last thing I did at night. I didn't eat nothing. I drank nothing else after that. It was the first thing I did in the morning on the empty stomach. And then I did that routine. Boom, man. Next thing you know, man, I lost it. Scott said, did that half black girl make contact with her father yet? Not yet. We're trying some more stuff. I gave her a suggestion. I said, Gail, write him once a week. One of those letters is going to get through. If he don't get it, maybe his wife gets it. But I told her, don't give up. We're on the one-inch line, guys. We can't give up. Some guy asked me today. That was one of my questions. He said, you went too far in helping Gail. Well, how far am I supposed to go, mister? You, you tell me. How far am I supposed to go? <laughs> you know, see, that's the problem. Frank Ellis said, there's no way I can make a video every day. It's, you know, if you love what you're doing, and I love this now. Y'all giving me a purpose. To the new vlogger out there or the would-be vlogger, if you can't dedicate 15 or 20 minutes a day to your vlog, to your channel, then you're probably never going to be successful. You know, now if you want to take the foot off, wait till you get 70, 100,000, then you can make maybe one video, two videos a week, you know, but... Until then, you know, man, I better keep going. Hey, Jade Ben Cheney. What's up? Doug Carr, Calvin, I'm in 18 eyes. Oh, man. If 
What, what's that mean, brother? Yeah, they got like their Honda Beats, Teddy Bear. That's my beautiful girl. Look in the camera, huh? One time. Show them how sexy you are. She got on her the real nitty gritty shirt, too. But she knows I don't like when she wears them tight jeans like that either. But what can you do? That's part of the. No one wears those skinny jeans like a Filipino. Yeah, Jacob, Tanya, Jay, Mr. Gregory, Mr. Do the right thing. Gail hasn't done anything. Um, <laughs> you know, she's innocent, man. Clayton Mary said, jump start metabolism. Once the mold is running, Filipino tune up does the rest. Absolutely. And boy, my, my, my girl's a, 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 an experienced mechanic. She knows how to get that motor running, boy. Oh, okay, Clayton Mary, one meal a day, Scott. I'm sorry. You know, IF is intermittent fasting. Well, you guys, man, you know I'm 58, man. I'm from the old school. Hey, Mad Max, easy peasy. Said great advice. Keep up the good work, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> Cal Devin said, remember, Cal, that's what attracted you in the first place. I ain't going to lie, man. When I first met my girl, man, I thought she was skinny, you know, because she had on this, you know, when, when it gets hot, because I met her in May. It was hot. She had on this long sleeve shirt, long jeans and everything. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's, you know, but that's what Filipinas do. And, you know, it was only till we went, we were going to, I was going to take her to Siki Island. So we needed some shorts. I took her to Robinson Mall and Dumaguete, because that's where we met. And she was trying on shorts. And she tried on some shorts and came out of the dressing room. And man, my chin hit the ground. I was like, wow. Yeah. And it's been like that ever since. Wow. The sea goat said at John Wells, what about a double jack and Coke at a bar? He says, I'm paying about eight to eleven dollars depending on the bar here. Hell, you could there, I mean. Hell, you could buy the bar here for that. <laughs> Cal Devin said Cal got hungry. Yeah, see, I'm gonna tell you something, man. I, you know, I'm one of those guys, man. You know, I get bored easy, but She's kept me interested, man. She's kept me, she's kept a passion, man. You know, it's like I just met her. And that's one thing about Filipinas that you're going to notice. It's like every day you're on your honeymoon, man. And that's a fact. Hey, Yusuf, Amar, Habib, he said, good morning, Calvin. I noticed women on Filipino dating sites say they are looking for a husband. But women in the Western world are opposite. What do you think? Yeah, well, see, and that comes from the cultures over here. And I said cultures, not culture. There's not one Philippines, guys. It's The Philippines is vast and it's diverse. Okay, my girlfriend's leaving now. They're going to give Rick his chest x-ray. Um, that's part of their cultures, man. They don't like that, you know, live-in partner type stuff. Even though they do it and it's getting more and more popular now. They want to get married, man, you know, and that's just how it is. Okay, Scott, you said you should watch Dr. Berg YouTube channel. He's amazing with natural healing. Um, Frank L said, blowing your mind 69 and 10. These women, man, they're, they're special, man, and that's why. See, like I told Ingram Davis the other day, he said that, I think it's Dez's hangout haven said, she, you know, she likes brothers, right? It, 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 there used to be a saying, once you go black, you don't go back. But I made up another one. I said, once you have a brother, you don't want no other. And he thought that was funny, you know, but that's crazy. But it's just like that with Filipinas. Once you meet a Filipina and you have a relationship with, I'm talking about a real Filipina. I'm not talking about a Filipina headache. I want them bar girls or GRO, 
Somebody asked me what that means. It means a guest relations officer. It's just a fancy name for a prostitute over here. Uh, Doug Carr said, Calvin, try Dr. Ken Berry on YouTube also and Jason Fung. Okay, I will. Uh, retired 2019, Calvin, how many meals do you eat per day? I eat small meals. I probably eat, not meals now retired, but I'm going to say I eat about four times a day. But it's not like breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. It's not like that. I may eat two meals in succession, then, but, but I never eat. I stopped eating around 5.30 or 6 because Filipinos, they eat late at night, and I had to stop that. So I make sure that my girlfriend cooks my dinner back. I'm done eating by 6. Because you're going to notice that over here. They eat late, man. They don't eat till like 8 o'clock. See, that's unhealthy for me. I can't do it. Uh, and what uh, Ken Tate said, good day, Calvin. See you on a favorite subject. Yeah. How to attract women, man, whether it's over here, whether it's over there. Um, it doesn't matter. How do you attract women? Terry Dale says she's gone for the day, Filipino tank. And that's another thing that's going to get on your nerves over here, Filipino time. And this is, look, if you don't hear anything else, once you meet a Filipino and you start dating her, going out with her, living with her, look, you better let her get ready first. I'm talking about you start getting ready. You get in the shower when she starts on her makeup and stuff and her eyebrows because they don't have eyebrows. They got to invent their eyebrows. And create them. If you don't, it's going to drive you crazy. They take so long. You make sure that she gets ready first. And don't say I didn't warn you. And wait until she starts on the eyebrows. Then that's when you get in the shower. Because it don't take us long, guys. Okay, Jacob. Time, Jay. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. He says that, that hamster wheel's calling him, man. Frank Ellis said, yeah, they put on makeup, but they don't put on no pounds. <laughs> you take them home, they will. I promise you that. Leo XL says, seriously, there's a way to stay in the Philippines forever. Yeah, one of my subscribers, he's probably watching now. I would never read him out. He done went underground. He done overstayed his visa. And you could, you could stay here forever. They would never know it. Unless you tried to leave. That's when they would find you. They're not looking for you, man. You know, I wouldn't suggest you do that. But you can do it. You know, you can just, he's underground now. He can never leave here. When he leaves, he's got a hell of a fan. He may be blacklisted. He may never be able to come back. Maybe. But if he gets a good lawyer, because he's got a child over here. So that may help him. But yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Jack Triple said, do the girls there prefer you wear a condom doing sex or not? They're not going to require it. That's something that you're going to have to do because she's not going to require it. Um, you know, whether that's good or bad, I'm just saying, you know, that's just how it is. Nicholas Cherry said, how often you shave your head? It grows, man. See, my hair, I'm really not bald. I got to keep it bald, Nicholas. So I have to do it about every two or three days. And my girlfriend does it. She does it so well. See, that's one thing about Filipinas, man. They, they do so many things well. And they're perfectionists. They're going to do it and do it until they get it perfect. And that's everything, man. And that's what I love about them. Because, see, I'm a perfectionist, guys. You know. Carlton Ingram says, Calvin, you right about letting your girl get ready first. My wife sometimes changed three times before we ready. Yeah, and, and you're exactly right about that. I learned it, man, because I'm going to tell you, we get in, man, I mean, I'd be heated. Sometimes I just leave. Ask John. I've left this house and went on to the restaurant without her and let her come on, man. You get tired of waiting. 
and it's so uh, hot over here, man. You like sweating, you know, you know, because you know, you, if, if you just sit around over here, you got to take another shower. Hey, Philip Cooper, man, good to see you, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, he said, "Great seeing you here, Cal." He said, "Looks like your home's going up nicely." It is, man. I, I trust the engineer. He's got a great crew. How you doing, Philip? Last time I saw you, man, you you moving around. You in Utah? You in Vegas, Utah? What's next, brother? Hey, I appreciate it, Nicholas Cherry. Yeah, she keeps it looking good. She's got to do it today. Cause I don't like this. See, it's getting dark around here. I don't like that uh, college professor look, you know, where it's dark here and you don't have nothing up here. Uh, the the Barney Fife look, that's what I call it. Yeah, uh, uh, a sec, a sec, Mimos. He says, wow, the U.S. dollar went up great. Time to be in the Philippines. Let me see what it is. It was almost, it was 49.98. Let me see what it is now. Give me a second, guys. Let me see what this is now. The U.S. dollar. Because I usually check it before I come on here. Wow, it's over 50, man. It hasn't been over 50 since the first of the year. It's 50.18. It's going back up. That go, you know why, don't you? Because the United States has opened back up. This is what I was trying to tell y'all before. The dollar wasn't down because the United States was printing money. People always say that. That's not the reason. It's because the import and export with all these lockdowns was not normal. No one needed the new the, the uh, U.S. dollar. Now that the United States has opened back up, things are getting back to normal. You're going to see, man, that this is going to go back up. I mean, it wasn't, I promise you, man, um, it had got down to 47.75 the lat, the latter part of May. <laughs> the professor said, you talking about me again, Calvin. <laughs> no, you know how it gets dark around here and you don't have nothing up here. I don't like that. Uh, Carlton Ingram says, I'll be moving to the PI soon after I retire. I love life in the Philippines. I do too, man. It's just simple. It reminds me um, when I was growing up, man. And see, the Filipinos, they were, man, it, around here reminds me of the neighborhood when I grew up. Everybody knew everybody. You could go next door and borrow egg or rice or somebody may come by and you might let them cut your yard for a few dollars, something like that. That's what it reminds me of over here. Hey, Joan uh, Soap, he says, Hi, Calvin, and hi to my sexy hot papa. I think he's talking about you, Ingram. George said, You always lose when you send money. Yeah, especially if you never met the woman before, you haven't got an established relationship. See, guys, what's going to happen? And I was talking to one of my subscribers via email. When you start chatting with a Filipina, see, you're going to start feeling sorry for her when she shows you how, where she lives and everything like that. You can't fall into that, guys. You can't fall into that trap because as, as, as bad as it sounds, man, you're not responsible for taking care of her. Now, when you get over here and you want to start helping people, your boots on the ground over here like I am, and you up close and in person like that, and you see it. Yeah, because if not, they will play on your kindness. And it happens all the time. A real Filipina is not going to do it, you know, because of the unspoken agreement. It's there already. She expects you to take care of her, but she's never going to ask you for money. They know the bad reputation the Filipinos have around the world, even though it really isn't true, guys. They let a small percentage. Of Filipinos paint, uh, use the paintbrush, and but they use the paintbrush on all the rest of them. You know, I know about uh, stereotypes, guys. Uh, a sec memo says, Calvin, how is it being with a single mother? I'm very split on that right now. Well, you know, 
it's to each his own. Really, I haven't had a problem. You know, my first son's mother was a single mother. Uh, now my wife, she didn't have any children, and now uh, my girlfriend now had two daughters. You know, that's never really bothered me. I had a stepfather, um, and it's just so different over here. You know, they don't expect you to take care of their kids. You know, if you do, fine, but they don't expect you to. Um, and I just never had a problem with it. I don't see it. I don't see it as being a problem, really. But it's like, you know, everybody's different, man. You know, because I'm dating her. I'm not dating her children, you know. Uh, but remember my thing. I'm going to build my life. And whoever I in, invite inside is going to be inside my world. See, they live with me. I don't live with them. And that's just how I if you keep it like that, you're not going to have any problem, man. And a lot of people make mistakes. See, we want a perfect perfect. I mean, I'm a single father. You know, I've got, you know, so, but we want this perfect Filipino, but we don't want to be perfect. We want to bring all our baggage over here and she's supposed to accept our baggage. But, you know, see, that's a double standard, guys, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, uh, see, Zen and Awesome says the Sunshine Shows, did you read that story of the European guy who was being charged for having kids with four different Filipinas and ghosting them started as a complaint? They filed charges. Yeah. And I'm thinking, is it four or is it seven? My girlfriend showed me the article. And see, that's what happens. And that's but see. Whereas I tell you guys, don't paint all Filipinos with the same brush, they will paint us with the same brush. This is the reason why they don't uh, trust foreigners. They think we're all like that guy. He's come over here. I think he's got like four, five, six, maybe even seven baby mamas. And then he done left. He goes from Allen to Allen, you know, getting Filipinas pregnant. And he thinks it's smart, you know, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but whenever they catch his ass, he's got he's got something coming, man. You know. Um, Buffalo Dan said, my wife was a single mother. The kids are very respectful. Two moms in the Philippines are looked down on, so they work harder in a relationship. I, I got to agree with you as far as them working harder. Uh, because remember, man, I... I'm not a two-time loser. I'm a two-time winner. You know, you don't lose when you deal with regular Filipinos, man. Even though I was, the relationship didn't work out, the other two, they were great relationships, man. And I could have married either of them. Uh, it's just we were not compatible. The woman that I'm compatible with just so happened to have two kids. I'm not going to hold it against her. When I met her, I had six kids. I mean, you know, so I'm not supposed to want a woman with kids, but I've got six. Oh, I don't want a, you know, a, a divorced Filipino, but I'm divorced. Most of us that come over here, we're divorced, or we got kids or something. You know, George said, I heard it was five. I think it is five, George. Something like that. But the point is, yeah, this guy, um, you know, he's a slam ball, really. Because Filipinos, once they, remember I told you that you start out slow with the Filipino. You know, you don't go for the home run. Just bunt. Just try to get the first base. Because once she starts trusting you just a little bit, it's going to be like a snowball going down the hill, man. You know, it's going to pick up real quick. It's going to speed up really quick. And that's what he's doing. See, he's gained a trust. And then, you know, he gets them pregnant and then leaves them, man. Right. The seed goat says being a single mother doesn't make them a bad person. But, you know, some people, you know, they're just so crazy about that. And you can't. You know, you can't fault them. You are who you are. You like what you like. You have your preferences, okay? Some men prefer single women. I get it. I don't knock it. You know, they say, oh, it's like drinking somebody else's warm beer. You know all the stuff they say. But I promise, man, I'm 58. I've been married twice. I'm not a saint. But I can honestly say that this single woman that I met is probably the best woman I've ever had in my life, single, 
with children, without children, man. She's, I mean, trust me. Oh, yeah. Nicholas Cherry said the old school going to get milk trick. Yeah. And then he never comes back because remember, you can go these different islands, guys, are almost like different countries for real. To get rid of a Filipina, you're going to have to move to another island and then you can get away from her. That's the only way. And that's what he's doing. See, uh, but if you if you have a problem, you got an ex in Cebu, you're going to have to leave Cebu City. You know, you may go to somewhere like Dumaguete and start all over. If you get in trouble with Dumaguete, you may have to go to St. Carlos City like that. But, yeah, that's what he's doing, Nicholas Cherry. He said, I got to go. And he leaves. Um, and he's put these women in just a hell of a rut, man. Imagine. It's hard enough making it over here. Now you got a child by some slam ball. Uh, Buffalo Dan says, Smoky Filipina stay fertile. Yeah. And that's what you have to. I already told y'all that, man. If you touch a Filipina, she's going to get pregnant. Guys, you got to be careful when you come over here, man. You know, uh, if you don't want to have children, then you better take the precautions, man. Uh, Frank Ellis said, move to another country. Yeah, well, these, these islands are like countries. They are. You know, you could be, because, you know, let's trust it, the masses here, they very seldom travel. You could be in Lady after leaving Cebu, and, and you might as well be overseas. They would never know you're in Lady. They would never come over there to try to find you. Uh, Scott says, Calvin, what's your favorite meal that your girlfriend cooks? I love her uh, adobo, whether it's chicken adobo, pork adobo, and then she makes pants it really, really well. I mean, it's really good. Pants it is, you know, noodles with chicken, beef, or pork, or shrimp with vegetables. It's delicious. Okay, Zen and Awesome says, not me. I'm snipped, clipped, tied, and burned. Yeah, just saying. That's the only other way because, you know, this is a big Catholic society over here. And, you know, contraceptives and stuff like that are not really pushed like they are in a lot of the Western countries, you know. And, you know, you got, the, you know, the big, the Pope is seen as a god over here. And if he's against contraceptives, I mean, what, what do you think? They're not going to use them. Hey, thanks, to Professor, for the Super Chase said declarations for the new man cave. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. One of my subscribers, he said, he said, Calvin, I'm going to give you a half-warming gift. He said, you got the choice between uh, a ceiling fan or a hot water heater for your bathroom. I, I chose a hot water heater. So thank you, Professor. I appreciate it. Uh, I really do, yeah. And one guy, Sam Champion, said he's sending me some towels and washcloths and uh, some dead boats for my door and some a lock and keys from America for my doors. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo Dan said, you got to get your pullout game down to a science. Yeah. If not, man, you're going to be in big trouble over here. Because I promise you, my son's mother, you know, I can't even, you know, it had to be the first day we met. Um, that she became pregnant. I met her in uh, January and I ended up staying until March. I went home um, in March and she called me. And she said, yeah, she thinks, she said, she think I'm pregnant. But see, 
she was afraid to tell me because she thought I was the typical foreigner. And I was going to say, no, nah, it's not my baby and, you know, and all of that. But I didn't. I shocked her. That next month, April, I went back over there. And that's when we, we rented the place in Cebu. And, you know, I furnished it. And, you know, and then we started our life together. But, yeah, because she liked to do other things, man, you know, and I'll just leave it at that, you know. Because, you know, she she worked 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. She didn't want a baby. She liked to work, and that's what she's doing in America now. She's working two jobs over there. She built a nice house over here for a family, you know. She didn't want any kids, you know. But, again, if anybody wants to know, um, if you have a baby by a Filipina, you can still get the baby a CRBA or your citizenship to your country, whether you're married to her or not. One of my subscribers said he heard a popular YouTuber say that if the baby's born out of wedlock over here, they can't be a U.S. citizen. That's not true. Both of my sons were born out of wedlock, and both of them are U.S. citizens. Okay. Uh, Frank Ellis said the Filipinos get abortions. Yep, illegal abortions, back alley abortions, very dangerous, and I would not suggest them doing that. But, yeah, they do it. They go to these quack doctors and they give them this concoction that they drink. And, yeah, they've perfected it down to a science over here. Yeah, Jay Bianchini says, yo, Calvin, you ever heard that story about them Navy men in a longer pole knocking up all them Filipino girls back in the day and they would leave and split? Yeah. And that's what happened with Gail's situation. Even though he paid the mother to have a procedure, she didn't get it done, you know, because, of course, you know, they're against that over here. Um, it happens a lot of times. A Guillermo Herbert D. Montoya Hernandez Goldfarb, the name of the year, by the way. He says, I doubt Philippines is a good place for gay guys. No. It's fast becoming the go-to place for gays from the West because you're not going to get us. You know, Filipinos are a lot more mature in a lot of other ways than Westerners. And as far as, you know, tolerating gays is one of them. You're not going to get a second look over here, guys, if you come over here and you, you know, you're gay. I mean, because you see a lot of lesbian couples over here, a lot of gay couples. Nobody even gives them a second look and this is the go-to place a lot of gay men i met a gay guy in down in zamboanga he's from germany he was dating the, the the young boy and i saw him at the sale del mar and I, I always try to talk to foreigners and i just asked him i said hey man what do you like about the philippines and he i thought he was going you know that same old yellow yeah, people and blah 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 low cost living he didn't he said i can come here and be myself, he said, you know, as a gay man, he said he caught a lot of flack over in Germany. He said, but when he comes here, he's with his Filipino lover, they don't have any problems. Yeah, Nicholas Cherry, that guy's got a heck of a name, man. It's the biggest name I've ever pronounced before. Yeah. England Davis says, Sunshine Show, there's a lot of German dudes looking for lady boys in the field. Yeah. Um, I mean a lot, and that's mostly who you see over here parading around with. They, they're gay. They're German guys. I don't know what that's all about, and I'm not knocking them. George said lots of gay guys in Thailand. See, I, I, I've never been to Thailand. Guillermo Herbert D. Montoya Hernandez Goldfarb. He said, thanks, guys. That's great to hear. Yeah, it is. It, it's become the go-to place. Nobody's going to bother you here. Nobody's going to give you a second look. You're walking down the, you know, if you're skipping down the street, holding hands, you know, singing somewhere over the rainbow, nobody's going to bother you, man. You know, it's, 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 it's 
It's just normal over here, man. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, Greg with Calhoun T. Uh, he said, and a lot of gay guys in Atlanta, Georgia, down low brothers, yeah. Um, that became the San Francisco of the South when they passed that Fairness Act. They tried to pass that in Louisville, Kentucky, but we voted it down. And I say we the people, not me. Um, hey, thanks, Pokey Bear, for that super sticker. Yeah, yeah. Carlton Ingram, you're right. He said in the Philippines, if you stay in your lane, you're good to go. And it's true. Um, hey, John, take care, man. Let me know when you want to come back on here. People have been asking me. So just let me know. <laughs> Clayton Mary said somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. You can hold hands and skip down the middle of the street, Clayton, and nobody's going to bother you over here. Believe it or not. Yeah, Will Shaw, he says, you know you're a big time Calvin when you have other vloggers making clickbait videos about you. Yeah, it's crazy. And I really feel sorry for him, man, because eventually they're going to run out of people to talk about, man. You got to be able, that's why YouTube calls us creators. You got to be able to create content. You can't ride the back of other vloggers. I mean, those vloggers are much bigger than me, more, you know, views, more subscribers, and they get the treatment. So, you know, I'm, I'm no different. It's just my time and, you know, but I ignore the stuff, man. And, and it's, I feel sorry for them because they're probably going to get better traction, you know, making regular videos than being a troll because troll is a lonely life. And you, you hit a wall somewhere around three or 4,000 subscribers, and that's it, you know. Yeah, a rag jam rock says, Thailand is famous for lady boys, not my cup of tea. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to be there trying to guess, you know, is this a woman or not? See, over here, you don't have to worry about that. I did a video like that. See, there's, there's some... I've seen some nice looking gays over here, but a lot of them are just men with long hair and booty shorts, really. They don't look as good as these women over here. It's not like over in Thailand where they've had all that operation and all that stuff. <laughs> Cal Devin said, Cal, if I clean up cow biscuits, can I stay longer? Yeah, man. But by the time you get over there, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, they're going to be gone. Uh, Pokey Bear said, y'all need to go to New Orleans. New Orleans, man. Oh, there's a lot of them down there. Uh, Candy Gula says, are there a lot of dark-skinned Philippines? Yeah, most of them. Yeah, we're close to the equator here, man. I think, as hot as it is. Yeah, you know, most Philippines. Uh, believe it or not, man, sometimes I go places, they think I'm Philippines. Yeah, especially when you see the tricycle drivers, the people who work outside, you know, Filipinos really are just like, if you ever seen light skinned black people, that's their color for real and darker. And remember, there's not just one Philippines, man. If you go around the Philippines, like you go down in General Santos, the Serengeti province, the the southernmost tip of the Philippines, you're going to see real dark Filipinos, you know. Uh, but they come in all shapes, sizes, and colors, man. Yeah, Will Shaw, he said, LeVon White, it was some barefooted hillbilly girl talking smack. And I don't understand it because she's got everything that foreigners like. 
Filipinos should have to have a successful channel. Now, why she wanted to go that route and become a troll, that's something you have to ask her. But it was a terrible decision, a business decision on her part. And she's going to regret it because see, Filipinos, they can't take, they can dish it out, but they can't take it. And she's not going to be around long. Hey, thanks, Guillermo, Herbert D. Montoyo, Hernandez, Goldfab. I just like saying that. He said, I think Calvin does a great job with his vlog, very informative and realistic covers of life in the Philippines. And I try to be, uh, I try to give you the 360, be diverse sometimes. Um, you know, because I did one on, the guy, I guess he thought it was my first uh, fitness video that I've done. I've actually done three. He says, man, come on, man. You were talking about the Philippines the other day. Now you're doing an exercise video. What, what's going on? And I said, it's all about being diverse, man. I mean, you know, 95% of my viewers are men. This is the kind of stuff we're interested in. And eating right. You know, we're older. We're 45 and older. A <laughs> sec memo said, yeah. Like that girl Hernandez gets on you or overstay road. I wonder who her kid's father is. I'm pretty sure it's a brother. I don't know, but she's not a bad looking woman and she has everything that Filipinos, you know, to attract foreign viewers and subscribers. But she wants to take that route. She's not going to last with that because she was getting some traction taking showers and stuff on YouTube. That's what she was known for at first. Now she's trying to troll foreign vloggers. That's not going to work out for her. But, hey. But I'm going to tell you, you know, you know, she probably needs to go back to taking showers. Her and her sister were taking showers on YouTube, and she was getting some videos, you know, some views. But now she, she I seen she did one on Tim K, me, Overstay Road. She stays on Overstay Road. I don't know why. <laughs> Pokeverse said, yeah, dude, I'm on that ass. When folks are trying to curb assassinate, yeah, I look at it as a as a community, man. I would never do that to another vlogger, man. I, I just wouldn't do it. it. It's a lonely, it's a lonely path she's going down. Imagine, man. Within a year, I've got twenty thousand subscribers because I'm trying to build people up, man. I'm trying to talk about stuff that's going to bring us together, not going to separate us, man. And I'm almost, I'm, I'm, man, I'm knocking on the door at twenty thousand. I mean. That's unbelievable, man. My girlfriend can't believe it. She's shocked. And I'm shocked. But I got you guys to think for it, man. It doesn't matter how big these YouTubers get. Without the viewers and subscribers, they're nothing, man. You know. Hey, Simply Acta, she said, just got off of school. Wow. You go to night school, huh? She said, Mr. Live, how's everything, guys? Good. Uh, Joe B. said, Cal, have you come across the original Filipinos, the so-called uh, Beluga or Bulaga? Uh, I've seen the, the Adas. I've seen them many times. If you go to Barakai, you're going to see them because they've got an a island somewhere around, I think it's Antique A lot of, of uh, uh, black the original Filipinos live up that way. I see them all the time. You go to Barakai. They're just black people. Some of them have blonde hair, but they're just black people. They just look, look just like me. Uh, but they're very, very, very shy. I tried to approach a little brother because I was going, he was working though. I was going to buy him a coat because it was hot. I was taking the coat up to him, man. Boom, he took off uh, <laughs> flying, man. Hey, Derek Greenway, thank you, brother. He said, do your thing, Cal. I'm just trying to help people, man. You know, we've done over 450 vlogs. I do a vlog every day. Only day I ever miss was when my granddaughter died. I had a four-month-old granddaughter die back in October. See it, guys. It didn't nobody know. I took that day off. Uh, anytime I do a vlog, it's usually two, 300 people watching, man. I mean, you know, it's the stuff that you only dream about happening. 20,000. You know, we've had thousands and thousands of Filipinos struggling during the 
uh, pandemic, man, you know, if you told me I could have did all that within a year, did I want to do that on down the line? Yeah, but within one year, no, I would have never guessed that. And, and I'm, I'm proud of that. Uh, Philip Rogers said, Baguio is the summer capital of the Philippines, and it also has really nice resorts. Definitely a cooler place temperature-wise. Yeah. The mountains that I did that video the other day, it's cooler up there, guys. I promise you, I don't really like making videos up there because the wind is always blowing. And once I remembered when I go to Bacala and get me a mic, a clip mic, and I can put the, you know, the thing over there that that keeps the wind from getting on videos. I'm not going to make any more, but it's cooler up there, man. It's really nice. Nicholas Cherry said, guys, I'm quitting smoking this week. Cigarettes or weed? Cigarettes, it's going to be tough, man. Hey, the seagulls, sorry for your loss. Yeah, it was tough, man. Uh, my daughter still hasn't gotten over it. I don't know if you ever will. Uh, okay, Pokey, bro. Yeah, they'll win suppressors for your mics. Yeah. But see, I, I'm just using my uh, iPhone, so I'm going to have to get me a clip mic and get me a wind suppressor. What's going on? Alchemist 89. He said, cheers from the Bronx. Much love, Calvin. Thank you, brother. <laughs> a sec memo says, yeah, LOL, she needs to take that shower. But I saw her in Vietnam with a brother. I think he's the dad. Probably he's coaching her to do so. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what she was doing, taking showers before. And if it was working for, you know, Oh, okay, Nick the Sheriff said we. Okay, I can never smoke seeds. <laughs> I started smoking. I only smoked a couple of years when I was, I started when I was 30. It was only because of the consequence of my drinking, you know, and getting high. And then I, I quit once I stopped drinking. Hey, Philip Rogers says, I'm trying to do that workout of yours, modified, but still trying to do it. Yeah, just take your time. Do the ones you can do. But remember, the more you do it, the more your muscles are going to become um, stronger and you're going to be able to, um, to do it. The longer you'll be able to do it, your endurance is going to pick up. Because when I... First started doing it, Philip. I couldn't go through the whole. I had to stop, start, start, stop. And then one day I just looked up, and I was able to go through it. And then I'm, I'm able to do it now. I can go all the way through it after 30 seconds, but I do the 30 seconds because it's a reason it's there, guys. Um, e. Smokum says, be a better version of yourself. Have goals to improve your life. That's how I think you attract women. Absolutely. A uh, Derek Greenway said, I know I, I wouldn't get over the loss of a child. Yeah. And the thing about it, the baby was four months old. They had already bonded. And it's really turning up, you know, but it's nothing I can do as a father, you know, but just listen to her. And I just told her to go ahead and grieve, you know, don't, you know, and get it out. Say whatever you want to say. Because no one. It, 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 we can we can't really understand what you're going through. Most of us have never lost a child. Simply, I can say, "Cow, the house is on its way, and it's and it's something to be proud of, my friend." Yeah, I'm proud. It's a modest house, uh, you know, unassuming, but it's going to be ours. You know, we can save some money on rent. Um, Joe B said, "Cow, do you think a road trip around the Philippines is?" is advisable and safe. Yeah, I would. But, you know, like I said, there's certain parts in Mindanao you don't want to go as long as you uh, – but there would be something great to do. And it's easy to do with two-go, with fast cab, with the uh, things like that. If you ride a motorcycle, you could actually bring your motorcycle on the fast cab, any of those big ferries, and, of course, the two-go. And take it with you. Yeah, Nicholas Cherry, Sunshine, shut sober. 
Yeah, John's moonshine. I'm sunshine. Uh, Terry Dale said, can someone say Baloo? I don't deal with that Baloo. I don't deal with that. It's a lot of stuff over here, man, that's exotic as hell. Uh, and I guess we got exotic stuff in America, too, you know. But they got some exotic stuff over here. I won't fool with Baloo is one of them. Ty Cromwell says, dress well, smell good, be clean. Basic appearance goes a long way. It does, especially over here. Because that's what's, that's what's going to catch her eye. And you're going to notice, especially if you smell good, Filipinos, they'll do that sniff test. They're always sniffing up on you. And you'll see them there. You know, they'll get up close to you and they'll do that. Yeah, when you smell good, uh, They do like that. Uh, Gary T said, how would you like to see Sunshine Shows grow? Just keep going, man, and just continue to help as many people as we possibly can. Because really, my best work is ahead of me. Once the Philippines opens up, see, that's when I'm going to be, you know, able to provide the better service. Then when people are actually over here boots on the ground and they need my help. See, just talking to you about the place it's really not the same as when you're going to get over here and then you're going to uh, really need me to help you, man. I just want to continue to grow, keep people safe, make your trip over here more enjoyable. And, of course, help the locals, man. You know, you're not going to be able to come to the Philippines, man. And if you're a normal person and feel the need to be of some type of help, it's, you don't have to. <laughs> Paul Smith said, Calvin, you realize you are encouraging many impotent guys to come to the Philippines. May not work. But there's a lot of other things to do besides, you know, that. I mean, if you're impotent, then you're not even thinking about a woman anyway. That part of your manhood has, you know, has run its course. But you can still sit back here and relax on one of these nice beaches or up in the mountains somewhere. Uh the peace and quiet. A lot of people don't like the Philippines because it's just too quiet. It's too laid back for some people. We're used to all that hustle and bustle and all that noise and stuff. That's the reason you can hear these roosters, man, because everything else is quiet. If you were in the city, man, you can't hear the roosters over all them cars and all that hollering. But some places it's just too quiet. It's dead silence. And unless you somebody like me who loves to read and who can you know, who, who's okay in their own skin, you're not going to like it. You go to a place like um, Sikiwa Island, where there's not a lot of tourists and stuff, and it's dead silence over there, you're not going to like it. Chitlins is the Balut of America. No, Chitlins is better than Balut. I don't know what you can uh, compare Baloo to. I mean, it's really, it's really like eating a rotten egg. It's really what it is with a baby chicken in the middle of it. See, once you see all them little veins and all them little arms and stuff, that's why they sell it at night. They don't want you to see that stuff. Joe B, any news on the Philippines opening up? No, but it's opening up for Filipinos who have fully vaccinated. Now they can go a lot of places and they don't have to quarantine or they don't need a swab test. That's good news. Smoky Mountain Miler says, Calvin, I'll let you be my front for helping people. Yeah, uh, because, you know, by me, by being a pandemic, see, pre-pandemic, I stayed far up under the radar. Y'all got to understand, man, the pandemic's still raging over here. The lock, excuse me, the lockdowns, people are still struggling over here. So that's why I decided to start helping people. And I raised my head above the radar. They can see me now, you know, but once the pandemic is over and everything goes back, I don't think I'm going to be helping as many people as I do now because they're going to be able to help themselves. 
Will I still have a spin wheel? Probably. You know. But I would stay beneath the radar, you know. But coming over here buying a family of a 25 kilo sack of rice or 50 kilo sack of rice doing it one time, you're still going to be under the radar, guys. Pokebear says, what about the variant COVID Delta? Well, the Philippines says they got 17 cases over here. Okay. Frank Ellis says, I've never had chitlins, Cal. Wow, really? Now, you got to try at least once, man. <laughs> K Earl says hit the like button before you leave the chat for Calvin. Yeah, thanks guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sam Safari says, sorry, Mr. Calvin, to hear about your granddaughter. Yeah, it was a shock to me, man. And it was my oldest daughter. Um, my namesake, her name is Calviana. And she's a great mother, a great human being. And of all the people to lose a child. I mean, she's blaming herself, but the doctors already told her, um, it's not your fault. We don't still, we still don't know what causes seeds. Sam Safar, so no, the seed goat said, Calvin, let's be honest, I'm coming over there to whore around party and relax same thing. So, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. And see, I take my hat off to guys like you. Go back and look at my video called, you know, uh, love is just uh, lust dressed in a three-piece suit. Most of us come over here, we lie to ourselves. We think we're coming over here and be these uh, conservative gentlemen, man. Knowing all the while why we're coming over here to get, you know, wild, you know. Joe B. said, Cal, do you have a lot of brownouts in St. Carlos? Yeah. Lately, at least about once a month. We had one yesterday for about, no, two days ago. For about two hours, man. They don't tell you anymore. But we starting to have one about once a month. And um, it's strange to me because right down the street here, the Eco Highway, this way, sorry. Um, there's one of the Philippines' largest solar farms. And it's one of the only ones that's actually generating electricity. But it doesn't go to help the citizens. It goes to the electric company. And I don't know if they trickle that down, but electricity is expensive here. But, yeah, we get about once a month. Uh, Harold Kemp said, Calvin's a man. Lots of people talk about helping people. He walks a walk. Yeah, and thank you, Harold. But somebody did it for me, man, believe it or not. Uh, and that's why I do it, you know, and if you any got any type of compassion for your fellow human being, when you get here and you see it, I did a video called, it's called The White Man's Burden. It's just talking about, you know, we have we, we can't help everybody, man, you know, and that's what happens. Man, my, remember I told you one of the first trips I came over here, I spent $7,000 in two months because I was giving a lot of money away. You can't do that, you know, the need is so great. You can't help everybody, but if you come over, you're going to see somebody, man, to help, man. It's, it's, it's plenty of opportunities to help. Uh, thank the bomb white for the super chat. He said, I'm coming for the trees. Yeah. What, the tall women? And, you know, it's just about being true to yourself when you're coming over. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's legal what you're doing, you know. They call it sex tourism. And, you know, now they call prostitution human trafficking. Really? You know, we've gotten too politically correct, man. It is crazy, man. You know, good and damn well. There ain't no human trafficking. It's called prostitution. That's what it is. You know, is it right? No. Is some women, you know, engaging in it voluntarily? Yeah. Some of them being forced into it? Yeah. But it's not no human trafficking. Uh, Frank Ellis said, once a money ain't bad, if you think about it. Yes, it is, because when it happens, man, it happens. It's 8 to 12 hours, and it kick your butt. <laughs> uh, I love what John said. That was a great video of Calvin and John was trying to loot. See, first of all, you're supposed to get it at night when it's hot. 
And, you know, because by the time John bought it to me, it was cold. It was, oh, man, it was horrible. I couldn't get past the smell. And the little piece of juice that I tasted, uh, you know, I, I would drink a gallon of chitlin juice. Before I couldn't drink a, a, a teaspoon of that. Uh, Pokey Burst said, tall women, 5'2", now. Nah. There's Amazons over here, man. You you see them in Cebu, you see them in Manila. Uh, these are Filipinos, you know, because Filipinos are mixed with a whole lot of stuff, and some of them, the ones who come over here and they try to break into modeling, to acting, they're mixed. They may be Filipino American, Filipino Italian, you know, but you're gonna see them and you're gonna be shocked. We went to Cebu one time. It was around the time all the uh, Miss Philippines in that contest, all of them are Amazons. They're tall. Um, and we went to boo me and my son's mother, the first woman I got serious with over here. And we were across from Robinson over by Fuentes Circle in Cebu. It just so happened that night, they were there, the contestants for Miss Philippines. And my girlfriend took a picture with one. My girlfriend was down here, and she was like 5'1 or 5'2. And the contestant was way up here, man. They're built different. They're taller. They're different. Yeah, simply, I could say you would never be able to help everyone, but every single good things you did for someone, you make the person's day. That's right. And that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. You can't help everybody, but you can help the people in front of you and that's what I would suggest you do, man. You know, everybody, you know, you don't have to do it, you know, but I mean, you, you're you going to be unthinking because even when you go meet your girlfriend's family, there's going to be neighbors you're going to see, you know, hell, buy them a, a 25 kilo sack of rice for $20, man, and they'll never forget you. Every time they stick that cup down in that rice to make that rice for the day, they're going to think about you, man, you know. But hey, guys, I got to get off here. I got to meet my girlfriend over at City Hall. She's going to help Rick with his paperwork. We're making Rick legitimate today. He's going to be a legitimate tricycle driver because he wanted that. Because he knows that three quarters of the pedicab drivers over here are not legit, guys. Okay. Uh, Rick wants to be legit. So that's where she is now. I'm going to get off here. I'm going to go over there. Uh, meet with her and um, get him together. And I appreciate all the super chats, all the super stickers, the thumbs up. Let's see if we can get 200 before we get off here. Um, like I said, we're knocking on the door of 20,000. I want to thank y'all, man. I would never take that for granted. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Thanks to all your kindness, your generosity, your support of Sunshine Shoulders. If you're in America, it's getting late. It's almost it's 11.42 a.m. So on the East Coast, it's 11.42 p.m. I hope you help somebody before you get into bed and go to sleep tonight. But if you're on one of them late grocery runs, beer runs, weed runs, just getting off second shift, or like simply Akers just getting out of school, see somebody on the street, Buy them something to eat, buy them something to drink, give them a few dollars. If you're in the Philippines, it's 11.42 a.m. We have the whole rest of the day. No excuse that we shouldn't intensely go out and try to find somebody to help. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure. We help other people. We help ourselves. Before y'all go, I want to play y'all again my theme. Sunshine show it's the real nitty gritty. Who's on the ground? Sunshine show it's the real nitty gritty. Who's on the ground? Sunshine show it's the real nitty gritty. Sunshine show it's the real nitty gritty. Thank you to the NTZ crew. I appreciate y'all, man. Take care. Stay safe. Stay COVID-free. I'll see y'all next time.